Hello, Scorpio. Welcome to January 2022. Welcome to Divine Conversations. Thank you so much for tuning in. Okay, so Scorpio, you're catching me in a little bit of a saucy moment, but actually, it's good. Um, And I'll tell you why. I was only deciding, or I had only decided to just approach your energy today. I hadn't done it yet for uh, for the month of January. Um, and since today is Monday, Monday is, yes, a moon day, as I released the Cancer reading earlier. Monday is also uh, related to Pluto. And Pluto is, I guess at this point we could say officially your ruling planet, even though your original ruling planet was Mars. Um, and so Mars is still heavily wrapped up into your situation or into your energy. But so because I hadn't approached your energy yet and today is a Pluto day, I was like, okay, let me just sit down later on today because this is when I was out doing uh, grocery shopping and whatnot. Let me just sit down with Scorpio today, later today when I get home, you know, grab a beer, maybe, <laughs> you know, and uh, um, just chill and relax and wind down before I get ready to make dinner. Turns out my neighbor invited me to dinner. Hey, so now I'm just sitting here and I was sitting with your energy and I was like, you know, I'm sitting here writing all this down. I might as well just record the reading. So here we are. If you're new to the channel, welcome. My name is Eric. It is so good to meet you. Welcome to Divine Conversations. Welcome to the fam. Please make sure to smash that like button for me. Leave me a comment in the comment section down below. Let me know how this resonates for you. Um, and Or if you just want to say hi, please say hi. And absolutely make sure to consider slapping that subscribe button for me. Yes, if you're new here. Um, okay, I am going to talk to Scorpio Rising first. And when I talk to Scorpio Rising, I am speaking on behalf of sidereal astrology. Yes, not mainstream or tropical astrology. However, if you're interested, if you're a Scorpio Rising in, you know, uh, tropical, mainstream, um, and you want to approach it, see how it resonates for you, go right ahead. Um, if you're not familiar with sidereal astrology if you've never seen your chart i could hook you up send me an email that's in the description box below but sidereal astrology and we're going to talk to scorpio rising first and then we're going to get into the general tarot and just general messages for the energy of scorpio regardless as to whatever sign or um or um, i'm sorry uh, uh practice or discipline you subscribe to okay check for those timestamps in the comment section below and the pinned comment below yeah All right, Scorpio. Scorpio rising, you're first. And quite frankly, honey, I need to find a lighter because I need to light a cigarette for this. Hold on. Okay, we're good. Um, so as I was looking at the chart for you this month, I was just thinking about, you know, all the general energies that I've already talked about. We have the new moon that started the month. Okay. Uh, uh, that is in Sagittarius. We also have a full moon later on in the month. Um, that's also in Sagittarius, rightfully so. Uh, and, um, is on the 17th. We also have Mercury going retrograde this month, which I failed to mention in the Cancer reading earlier today, but we do have Mercury retro going retrograde this month. We also have Venus continuing her transit. And but then finally, we have the conjun a conjunction between the sun and none other than your official ruling planet, Pluto. Okay, Scorpio. So you're probably going to be feeling that anyway. Um, situations with Pluto often get blasted with power, okay? Like completely just enlivened, engulfed, and gorged with power. And it's it, it can feel like a rush. It can feel very sudden. Um, it's not necessarily that it is so sudden. It's more that it's so powerful when it involves Pluto that you just cannot deny it. Okay. Now, 
because Pluto is your ruling planet, you're most likely going to feel this very strongly, especially as a rising sign. But the energy of Pluto to me gives the character uh, reference of like, say, I say this all the time, of like a supervillain, of like a Maleficent or something like that, right? Or a Jafar or something. And Plutonian energy is very deep, okay? It's the furthest planet out, but it's also um, very mystical. It can be very mystical. And that it, it, it just... It makes pe it can make people power hungry. Okay, that's where like that that the root of that like power hungry type of extremely selfish type of energy comes from. It often involves a great deal of pain over a lifetime, many lifetimes, whatever. But but then, and that's all. That's very scorpionic in nature, right? That's a very Scorpio theme, anyway. But then it, add a Scorpio into that position. <laughs> One of the things that I wrote down about this energy for you, Scorpio, this month is this is like a supervillain's wet dream. Like any of, like think of, think of a really, a really mystical character, right? Or a, a, a witch or a shaman. Um, very powerful, very strong, very into it, yes? And think of now this person probably having a great deal of trauma, <laughs> right? Okay, so... Now think about in because what I thought what what I saw was this type of person would love an energy like this mainly because of the conjunction between the sun and Pluto because this can in it, it, it can just inject your soul with power all the power Scorpio right super villains wet dream. And think about it that now, this character, this type of character, especially if they're like a very much like a witch or a mage or a warlock or a necromancer or any of that shit, right? And they see this moment with the, the sun and Pluto already being a bit of an energetic gateway, yes? But wait, there's more. Because the conjunction between the sun and Pluto happens on the 16th. The full moon happens on the 17th so if just the conjunction between the sun and moon and pluto weren't strong enough now add in a full moon all the power scorpio so think about this type of character this witch mage warlock whatever using this as a portal or an energetic opening an energetic gateway a doorway to their greatest desires if they're evil right and of course this is all fantasy and whatnot whatever but but this is when i was sitting here looking at the chart we're gonna look at the chart you guys but when i was sitting here looking at the chart this is the this is the scenario that i saw this is what this energy felt like for me so as a result the title this is why the title of your reading is if you don't completely lose your mind i will be very impressed because part of this energy can actually be extremely destructive. I mean, just because this is the, the scenario, the first thing that came to my mind, this sensationalized thing, it doesn't mean that this is actually what's going to happen for you or this is actually how you are feeling it. You could be on the exact opposite of that feeling empowered and all that kind of stuff. You could actually be losing a hell of a lot of things right now. And you could have been using or losing a lot of these things for a long time, Scorpio, because this, the, the, the transits that are happening through your chart this month are connected to what's been going on with Uranus, especially Uranus having been retrograde, which is in Aries, which is ruled by who? Mars. Mars is also in your first house this month, which is ruled by what or who? Aries. Let's look at the chart. This is the 17th of January for you. This is the day of the full moon. Okay. So there's that snapshot. But let's go back. Let's go back. Way back. I know some of y'all were saying that too. <laughs> okay. Anyway. Um, let's go back to... 
today's the third. All right, let's go back to the third. This is today. This is the day that we're recording this reading, okay? Uh, the sun is here in Sagittarius. Oh, now, 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 okay, wait, hold on. Take a step back. Look at this chart. All of the energy is concentrated within two to three houses this month for everybody, okay? Scorpio, yours is concentrated between the first and third houses, mostly within the second and the third house for you. The second house being your house of values, your house of monetary value, <clears throat> the house of how you make money, your relationship with money, your relationship with the material world, what it is you value, okay? Third house is ruled by Taurus, which is also ruled by Venus, which is retrograde right now. Okay, so then you also have your first house involved, at least at this point, okay, early in the month. And that is because of Mars. Now, Mars is doing some things for everybody, okay? But Mars happens to be one of your ruling planets, Scorpio. And it's in your first house, which it rules via Aries, which has Uranus retrograde in it right now, which is in, happening in your sixth house over here. This is Uranus retrograde in Aries through your sixth house. Okay. Now also Mercury, because Mercury goes retrograde this month. Mercury is at, at this point on the 3rd of January, Mercury is in your second house here in Sagittarius, but it's going to be moving into your third as the sun also progresses into your third. The moon is doing its thing. Venus is moving retrograde right now. So she's going back towards the first. Okay. But Mercury goes retrograde. And Mercury rules the third house here. Now the third house would be... I'm, 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 I'm going off on a tangent. <laughs> Reel it in, Eric. Okay. So this is just the beginning of the month for you. All right. Now, what I was feeling as I was sitting with this, one of the first things I felt, other than that big sensationalized thing, what the first things I felt was some of you have been losing things, lots of things lately. Or if it's not like lots of things, it's things that are very, actually, very valuable to you. Um, and you're wondering why. And what I was picking up on that was you needed to lose these things. Yes, they had value to you. But for some of you, these values are being questioned. Is what you lost really that valuable to you? And if so, especially if you find your ego standing up and saying, yeah, it was valuable to me. Okay, why? Well, either, and that can go one of two ways. Well, it's this, 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 this. And you're like, wow. Is any of that relevant? Because that all feels quite frivolous. Or your ego just stands still and silent because it actually doesn't hold any value to you, for you. Or the value is absolutely irrelevant and even your ego knows it. <laughs> I got caught on the thing. The King of Pentacles though. I heard stand up for yourself, Scorpio. It's like your values are being called into question right now because somehow the values that you hold or that you have been holding devalue you. And the King of Pentacles is all about the value and his value and what he's worth and what his things, his possessions are worth. That's out here with the Three of Wands. Okay, so, okay, so somebody here, Scorpio, is really what you've been carrying with you, what you've been carrying in terms of your values has really been called into question. And what I'm hearing here, the, ta the, the, the catchphrase would be, you can't take it with you. So why are you trying to carry it now? Like, really, what is that? Why do you hold on to this is what I'm hearing. It, 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 it holds no weight with you. King of Pentacles, and then the star. You're be, mm, you're really being asked, Scorpio, 
to choose what's better for you instead of holding on to these dreams that I don't know, someone told you to value. Sorry, hold on, let's do this for a second. That somebody told you to value, and I'm not trying to devalue that person because it very well could have been your mother or something, but like something that you're holding on to is keeping you from achieving your dreams or going for what it is you do truly value. And so that's why some of these things have been falling away for some of you because you don't need them. You don't even want them. Um, or they're literally standing in the way of what it is you truly value. I want to look at the star. Yeah, Seven of Pentacles is the overall energy at the bottom of the deck here, Scorpio. Uh, what have you been growing in your garden? Is this harvesting what it is that you've been intending to on harvesting? Or I'm sorry, is this providing you what it is you intended on harvesting? Like when you planted these seeds or when you started these relationships or these associations or whatever, or this business opportunity or whatever. And you were you were getting you were growing that is this what you intended to harvest seven of pentacles queen of wands underneath that whoa whoa your alignment babe whether you're a man or a woman it doesn't matter the queen of wands represents your i just heard your astronomical astronomical alignment who you are what empowers you Okay, that, that whole structure, your the physical structure, your physical incarnation, I'm hearing, the Queen of Wands, your your astrolom astronomical alignment that, yes, does include like your zodiac and everything. Okay, but the Queen of Wands also represents your vibrational frequency, what it is you are actually in alignment with that causes something to be attracted to you, right? It, some of you are being asked, is this really in alignment with you? And you're being asked to fight for what it is you really truly wish to be in alignment with and or manifest the knight of swords <clears throat> and the magician are underneath that i just said i wanted to look into the star here and that's what i got but i do want to look further i want to move to a different deck i want to move to the energy oracle and we're still just talking to Scorpio rising here. We haven't even gotten to the rest of the general energies. Good Lord. Let's shuffle this a little bit. One. I hope you guys are enjoying the music in the background, if that's working correctly. Um, which would be my fault, not the music's fault. But uh, it's this dope uh, web uh, 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 page here on YouTube. You'll find the link in the description box below. Lo-fi girl, yeah? Last one. All right, cool. That's it. So I want to look into the star. I want to look into the star a little bit more for you, Scorpio, because this is really, I mean, I don't want to make this sound dire or desperate, but I'm feeling such a pull towards this. Such a pull. And the star is representing what, again, what truly holds value to you. Okay. I mean, this is, I mean, okay, so back to also um, the... <laughs> the supervillain aspect I was talking about. Take the sensationalism out of it. If if you are in tune with the universe and energy and yes, magic, because magic is real. Magic is the unseen, unseen force that we are all connected to that manipulates and we can manipulate with the magician, right? What we use to manifest, the power we use to manifest. That's real. And if you, if you really believe in all this stuff, you can absolutely use what's going on here as a massive energetic gateway for you to make the changes that you need to make. So while I'm talking a lot of doom and gloom here for a lot of people, this actually is a really, really good thing and can turn into a really positive thing if you approach it correctly. First thing to do there is to just get over the fear. Because literally, I mean, I, I hate to sound crass, but just get over it literally don't even look at it any longer be like yeah that's there okay great what are we going to do about this how do i solve this equation i don't know that's that is unsolvable that fear scorpio is unsolvable is un un um unsatiatable uh unpacifiable but that issue or situation in front of you that's generating all the fear is solvable so let's focus there yeah what's the star for you okay. 
What's the star for Scorpio? What do you want to say about the star through this deck, please, Spirit? What do you want to say about the star through this deck, please, Scorpio? This is how you open the door to romance. Ooh. Sorry, guys. This is how you open the door to romance. The world with door to romance. This is how you complete these cycles and really truly open the doorway you've been trying to open all along. And I'm hearing that's through being decisive, okay? I kind of want to go back to the chart here for a second because Mars right here. Mars is in your first house and Uranus is retrograde in air in yes in Aries right now in your sixth house so the, the sixth house is your house of health and wellness your well-being and if this is mainly massively on a romantic level for you especially with, with the retrograde of Venus right now which is in one of her ruling houses for you well for everyone in general but for you specifically it's in one of her ruling houses the second house your house of values so there is something that is coming up for some of you out here that is really not conducive to your health. And I'm hearing you're being made starkly aware of it this month and into the near future. But no, not just this month, because like I said, this is directly connected to whatever Uranus has been doing. And Uranus has been retrograde in Aries since August the last year of 2021, okay? It's going to go direct soon, but... So this really could have been an ongoing thing, Scorp. It's finally coming to a head, though, especially with the fact that Mercury, um, yes, is going to be retrograde. But see, the other thing about this, Scorpio, is that uh, I, I'm, I'm hearing, I wrote it down somewhere. Yes, this is a massive opportunity to rewrite the programming rewrite your own personal programming or like say rewrite the script rewrite the code i like to think of our minds as like computers and like the brain being the hardware the, the the mind being the software and downloading software into your hardware and blah 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 and all that stuff so like this is a time to rewrite the code of your programming of your mind especially with aries being in the first house the house of you the house of your I, i'm sorry mars mars being in the first house the house of you the house of your personal identity the per the house of your personal refinement your personal alignment the house of who you are is having a chance to be written rewritten especially when mercury goes retrograde in the third house which is a house of communication a house of travel a house of community okay the outside world in a sense, not really the outside world. That's really the ninth house, but okay. Communication. Mercury is rules the third house for you, Scorpio. So when Mercury goes retrograde in terms of this situation, you'll really be able to rewrite the code. I'm sorry, I got off on a little bit of a tangent here, but this is how you rewrite the programming. This is how you end the cycles and situations and open the door to romance. And how is that? And why is that? Because your, what you value is more in alignment with an energy that is loving, caring, and compassionate towards yourself. And so you are only accepting that which is loving, caring, and compassionate towards you. That's how. I got the download, so I said it. <laughs> That's the strategy. Oh my God, there is a strategy all along. This is at the bottom of the deck, Scorpio. There is a strategy all along. And this was it. Second chakra is underneath that and the Archangel of Balance all tied up. Your emotions have been all tied up. All tied up. Your sacral chakra has been all in knots. I mean, you've just talk about perpetual cramps. That's kind of what it feels like 
whether you're a man or a woman, especially if you're a man, because you don't naturally get cramps there every month, <laughs> right? That's just for some of you, but I mean, as, and as far as the symptoms go, but yeah, that's how you untie yourself by literally asking yourself, is this really in alignment with me? and fighting for whatever is in alignment with you so that you can manifest it. Good Lord, Scorpio. That was just Scorpio rising and that was 25 minutes. Um, anyway, it doesn't matter. I'm not complaining because I'm excited because now we're gonna get into the general energies, um, but I need, I need a smoke break. Anyway, <laughs> um, I think that, that was it. Yeah, that was it. Okay, let me collect myself, Scorpio. I'll be right back. Okay, we're gonna get into some general energies for Scorpio now. Um, actually, okay. So general reading, Scorpio, Sun, Moon, and Rising, maybe even Venus for the month of January, 2021. We're starting with the Energy Oracle deck. Welcome if you're just now tuning in, if you if you skipped the first half, if you skipped the Scorpio rising half. Um, whenever I talk about astrology, I talk about, I use the sidereal system, okay? Anyway, this could be for the Scorpio, this could be for the cross watcher, yeah? What message do we have for Scorpio for the month of January? Action is the first card out with hostilities. There are some hostilities in your life, Scorpio, that, uh, or there may be some hostile Scorpios around you that you may need to check. You, but 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 kind of the message here is that you got now is the time to to take that action. Okay, now is the time. Uh, either you've been stalling, or either you've been waiting for the right moment. Um, and I feel like it would be the right moment because Mars, one of your ruling planets, is a, is is going through a big transformation right now. In terms of sidereal astrology, Mars is uh, transiting through Scorpio into Ophiuchus, from your sign into Ophiuchus. I forgot to say that about. Wow, I totally forgot to say that to Scorpio rising. But if you're still watching here from Scorpio rising, um, Mars is transiting through Scorp from Scorpio into Ophiuchus. And Mars is digging up some things about our action, about ourselves, about the masculine, about our masculine. But this is an opportunity for all the reasons that I mentioned in Scorpio rising. This is the opportunity to heal that and to change that because then from Scorpio, he moves into Oak healing, healing, powerfully healing, transformative Ophiuchus. And add all that Pluto energy in there and let me tell you the power, guys. If you didn't watch Scorpio Rising, you might want to watch it just for the story because Scorpio Rising in Sidereal Astrology is going through some shit right now. <laughs> Action towards the hostilities, okay? What else do we want to say about this for Scorpio and or the Cross Watcher? Scorpio and or cross watcher. Angel of strength. All right. This would be the strength card here. Woman holding a coin. Yeah. Well, yeah. Woman holding a coin is Venus. And uh, Venus for Scorpio rising. Again, Venus is really transiting and um, really reshaping values for Scorpio energy right now. Okay. Um, what it is you truly value, you are going to have to fight for this month. And for those of you that skipped the first half, the reason why the title of this reading is, if you don't lose completely lose your mind, I will be very impressed. The reason why it's that title beca is because it feels like some of you have been losing a lot of things. You don't really have to be feeling that way anymore because at this point, I feel like you are starting to realize that the things that you lost or the things you have been losing, oh, are for some of you, the things that you have been losing are the things you need to fight for. But that the reason for that is because your values are being called or values are being called into question for Scorpio right now. Is this really valuable to me or not? And if it's not valuable, why am I fighting to keep it? If it is valuable and I'm losing it, 
why am I not fighting to keep it? Why am I not fighting to keep it? Spit it all the ways, right? You are being given the strength this month to take action towards that which brings hostility towards you. And it, yes, it absolutely does bring hostility towards you if it is causing you to lose what it is you truly desire, okay? Absolutely, 100% for sure on that. Uh, I, th- I want to get into some tarot. Oh, here it is. Tarot, excuse me. Let's get some tarot on that. The Hermit, Six of Wands, and your very own self, Scorpio, death. Okay. Follow your heart. Follow what is truly inside of you, Scorpio. And I know you're a fixed, I know you're all about transformation and all that, but I know you're also a fixed sign at the same time. And some of you are dealing with an energy of the fact that, or the reality of the fact that you are so comfortable getting people to change, walking them through their change. But when it comes to you having to change, that's a bit of a different story. But that's fixed energy for you. I get it. I mean, in tropical astrology, well, no, don't even say that, Eric. Why would I say that? In sidereal astrology, I'm a double fixed sign myself. So there's that. In tropical, I only have one. (laughs) Anyway, uh, follow what's truly inside you, Scorpio. And if there is some sort of direction that your soul has just been like, please, can't we go this way? Do it. You will find victory there, Scorpio, because that is the direction of what it is you truly value. Okay, fine, whether you want to admit it or not. Like, why do we even have to throw that in there, spirit? (laughs) But okay. (laughs) Uh, Love Oracle deck next for you, Scorpio. Mm, mm, mm. Mm. Two more shuffles here. One. Two. Woo! This is a doozy of a reading, y'all. Listen, I'm I'm doing this on Monday. Monday is a Pluto day. Pluto day, one of the Pluto days. I also have some Merb incense burning in the background for plutonian energy whoa the connection is real all right here we go from the love oracle deck what messages do we have cupid's arrow okay well cancer got this today cupid's arrow some of you might be finding your the loves of your life during the cycle and you don't even know it yet and it actually is going to seem like your worst enemy at first oh yes scorpio your worst energy maybe someone that you have a fierce amount of competition or comp- competitive energy with oh just boils your blood well think about it this way venus is retrograde right now okay so that could be an aspect of the friction here absolutely but venus is also retrograde and that is helping you reshape your values <gasps> so wait This person that you once thought was your energy now actually could be your friend and ally because you value things differently? Shut up, stop it. That is unheard of, I never. (laughs) Oh, I love it. Cupid's arrow. Mm Mm-hmm. Look at you, Scorpio, getting all smitten. How dare you don't say that to me. Palm tree, this is like your... This is, this is someone that even though there may be a, a bit of contention right now, and that literally, this could even be for someone that is actually committed to somebody, has been in a long-term relationship, and like, this is your person. But now all of a sudden, out of nowhere, even though you know where it's coming from, but out of nowhere, you guys are having all this difficulty, all this friction. You do know where it's coming from, but also it has a lot to do with Venus being retrograde right now through Sagittarius, which is expanding your mind or is maybe blowing the situation out of proportion. Yeah, Sagittarius can do that. But anyway, this person is stability. This person is your rock. This person is foundation or you have foundation with this person. And even as I'm saying that now, I'm picking up on some sort of fourth house energies, but maybe I'm just triggering my own. I think I might be triggering my own self there. 
when it comes to saying or hearing the phrase, you have stability here. Something about that phrase is making me think of family. And that could be really contentious, okay? And so who or this relationship that we may be talking about here, um, oh God, may, oof, ooh. The last thing you wanna do is reconcile see eye to eye with so and so or maybe that's the energy that's coming at you and even that even if that just that's just coming at you and you're not projecting that towards anyone i wouldn't even want to tell you to dive in there either like you know okay that's for some about somebody out here but there's there's some sort of stability or there's going to be some sort of stability in this cupid arrow strike okay excuse me cupid's arrow strike girl talk you're gonna meet them out with friends in a social setting at a bar maybe i don't know girl talk time with friends moving on happily single living in the moment having fun having fun okay time with friends happily single though oh oh i get it now scorpio that's where the stability is coming from the stability is coming from you and Cupid's arrow is able to strike and actually pierce its target because you have the stability and the foundation to withstand it. Oh shit, look at you. <laughs> okay, uh, damn, all right. <laughs> you <all> gone, girl. <laughs> Miss Janet, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I couldn't help it. Okay, and <laughs> what else do we have for Scorpio here? Spirit wants to get into the Oracle of the Seven Energies for you, definitely, to wrap this up. Maybe we'll get into some unicorns, but no, I think that might be it. Oh, wait, let's, um, let's actually pull some tarot on this real quick. One, two, and three. Uh, Cancer might have gotten a little cheated today because this is a completely different structure than what I did for Cancer's reading, but I'm loving this flow right now. I hope you guys are too. Let me know down in the comment section below. Smash that like button, subscribe. Uh, oh, and join me on Patreon too. I do daily readings and all kinds of other great stuff. Check out the information in the description box below, patreon.com slash divine conversations. Okay, uh, so... Uh, love energy here oh see yes yeah yeah that stability is within you scorpio four of wands just popped right out you are ready for this union and this is a year of union you guys all right so if like all my twin flames out there that are chomping at the bit this might be the year but like wait a oh, whole oh, well, whoa <laughs> whoa wait a second this is a year of the union between the masculine and the feminine Yes, because through because Venus's retrograde motion and her transit through Scorp uh, Sagittarius and all that involves Pluto, your ruling planet. A conjunction with her. I'm so, yes, Pluto's conjuncting with her, going through a three point conjunction right now, and that's going to bring Mars with it. The last point of that conjunction between Venus and, and Pluto involves Mars, and Mars, Venus, and Pluto together will all be conjunct. Both of your ruling planets, Scorpio, all right? But because of that, this is a time period where the masculine and the feminine can really realign with each other and fuse together at that final conjunction with Pluto. All of that power we talked about in the beginning of the reading, okay. And look at you, Scorpio, four of friggin' wands calling in that masculine energy, calling in that divine masculine, calling in that divine feminine, healing that masculine energy, aligning that masculine energy to get into alignment with what your real true values are, which leads you to be an open and viable target for Cupid's arrow. Go on, Scorpio. Nine. Damn, yo. Damn, yo. Nine of pentacles. Damn. I mean, this is great. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm extra. The, the, the Leo in me is really coming out, but <laughs> this is great. I'm so happy for you though, Scorpio. Like, like on some real shit, dog. Like I'm really happy for you because you're ready for this, Scorpio. You've been doing all the work. Now is the time. 
Now is the time for you, the final step in the process, for you to find that alignment, to step right into it and to walk on out into the rest of your life from there. I'm coming up. I'm going to stop there. I'm not trying to get demonetized. <laughs> Aha, excellent. King of Swords, Nine of Swords, Eight of Swords. Fear? The fuck is that? I, I don't, is that even a word? I don't write, is that English? I don't, I don't know that word. What is fear? Three of Pentacles, Ten of Swords. Go ahead, Scorpio. Closing Oracle Guidance for you, Scorpio, from the Oracle of the Seven Energies, one of my new favorite decks. Three shuffles here. Oh, sorry. The last bit of that message is Six of Pentacles. To Back to the King of Pentacles, to the Ten of Cups. Look at that, Scorpio. Look at look, look, look. Just, I'm just, I'm just gonna let your intuition tell you what that looks like, okay? Okay. Closing message. Three shuffles. One. Two. Ooh. Fear? The hell is fear? Three. <laughs> Closing message for Scorpio. Wow. Into me you see. Into me you see. Or in terms of this card, into me I see. Now, somebody could be singing that song. That is a Katy Perry song. Katy Perry is one of my favorites. But some of you could be saying that about someone else. You could be breaking down during this Venus retrograde because you get so vulnerable that now someone is really able to see into you. And let me tell you something, Scorpio. If that does happen to you, embrace it. Do not ever shy away from that i don't care if the person ends up hurting you if that happens there's a lesson to be learned i know that sounds insensitive in the moment but that's a whole other tangent that i don't have time for okay but please allow yourself to open up fear is an illusion scorpio and you, of all of us, should be the master of fear, or at least could be the master of fear, unless Scorpio energy is really debilitated for you, and then I understand why fear is a thing, such a thing, maybe an irrational thing. Uh, well, we'll say irrational in terms of what the average person would experience, but you're not the average person, so why would we even compare you to them? There you go. And then the final card you have here with Into Me I See is a powerful move. You have, a, you have the opportunity to make such a powerful move, Scorpio, because you are getting a direct open window deep into your own self at this time. And because of that, you are open and privy to the information that would give you the ideas or the knowledge to make that. So yes, while I did title this reading, if you don't completely lose your mind this month, I will be very impressed. Also, now I want to say, why would you lose your mind? You got this. Like I said earlier, a lot of you have been dealing with this for a long time. Okay, that's enough. I love you guys. Thank you so much for tuning in. I hope this was helpful for you. I am open for private readings. If you would like to get one, all of the information is down in the description box below. You can just email me and I'll, I'll get you all set up. Also, I heavily encourage you guys to join the Unicorn Herd, the family over on Patreon. You get daily, just about daily readings, depending on my workload. Uh, and you get certain discounts for whichever tier you do, different tiers that you choose. And 
check it out. It's a lovely situation. Yes, and we are definitely a family over there. You get you get like premier access and like prime treatment. So check it out. Yeah. Patreon.com slash divine conversations. The link can also be found in the description box below. I love you guys. I hope you have a great month. And I look forward to connecting with you again for our next reading for the month of February. Yes? Excellent. Take care. Bye.